Alright guys, um, it is a video to describe games I picked up in July. Um, I have 17 games and one new system. And I'm pretty excited about a lot of the games I'm going to show you, so I'll get right into this. Um, <clears throat> on Amazon, I picked, it, picked this game up. Um, it is from... A company called P Cube, which um, I think they're based out of the UK, and um, I was really shocked at how cheap this was, um, especially coming from the UK, shipping to the United States. Um, it was it was like I had it on my wish list, and it got down to like twelve dollars on Amazon, and then I think there was like a little bit of a shipping cost, um, so it was like right around fourteen fifteen dollars, and I haven't played it yet, um, but it is um, a peculiar game, but definitely uh, an interesting side-scrolling action platform platformer type game that um, I wanted to uh, give it a try. So um, that is Rabby Reby. Um, another game that I pulled the trigger on for from Amazon. Which I think I would have preferred this on my Switch, but um, it was it got down as low as twelve dollars, which is really good because this came out I think about two months ago, maybe a little bit longer, and it, it was a uh, twenty nine ninety nine, so to be brought down to twelve free shipping was um, a good price to pick it up at. Um, so I haven't played it yet. I know it is an RPG. Um, it just feels so intimidating to just keep pick up at picking up RPG RPGs, but um, it was one that I was um, interested in picking up when I heard it was announced. A game that I bought several months ago from I think this is strictly strictly limited games um, is a game called Bunny Must Die. Chelsea and the Seven Devils. Don't ask me uh, where what the where the title comes from, but um, it is another side-scrolling game. It just seems really weird to have this game as well as that game. Two characters with like weird-looking ears. Um, I'm not really all that into anime, but um, these are side-scrolling games, so I wanted to give them a shot and pick them up. Uh, this Bunny Must Die game, I've put in maybe a half an hour of it. Um, it's it's got decent gameplay. Um, it it's like you progress throughout different uh, sections of a map, and then you come across a boss. It's kind of like a Metroid type game, um, except definitely not as polished. Um, but not a bad game. Um, <clears throat> At a pawn shop, I picked up uh, Demon Souls for uh, less than three dollars. Um, I already have Demon Souls. It's just that I pretty much bought this for the case. Um, the version that I had previously was just a was a Best Buy case <clears throat> that was in a generic Best Buy case, and it's it's a game that I just care about too much to not find an upgrade, I guess you could say, and, um, so I, I went ahead and got it, <clears throat> sorry, I went ahead and got it, and, uh, didn't pay a whole lot, so, <clears throat> I have to figure out what to do with the, uh, other copy that I have, um, probably sell it off, for, sell it off or trade it off, um, a GameStop purchase that I made, which is um, a franchise that I, I didn't really know a whole lot about, but I know that they did make a few different types of these games called the Untold Legends series, which Untold Legends Dark Kingdom. This is a, I think this was a launch title for the PlayStation 3, uh, which is basically a Diablo-esque Gauntlet Legends style, <coughs> style action hack and slash game action I guess you could say action RPG but um I tried playing it and it's 
it's it's good. I mean, I I played it maybe like an hour straight, and then I put it down. I'm not like really geared to continue to play it for another 50 hours, but um, it definitely was um, something that I'm not ashamed of picking up. So uh, I definitely love trying action RPGs, games similar to like Baldur's Gate, uh, again, like the Diablo games, Gauntlet Legends, those those types of games are what I always really liked playing. Um, a game that I picked up earlier this week, and I've been playing it um, a lot of it. A lot of times I've been playing it before I go to sleep. Um, is Sonic Mania, and I don't know if I'm the only one that uh, is bothered by. The extended case, which, I mean, I'm not really trying to make like a beautiful collection where the games all line up, but um, if you do try to keep this in its like outer shell, it's going to really be an eyesore with the other um, <clears throat> other Switch games that you might have just because the case is like a normal uh, like DVD sized case and not like the sw other Switch cases, so... Um, but it, it is a very nice um, physical copy um, with like an art book and I can't remember what else is in there. But uh, I just have been playing the game. It's it's a really great game. Um, I wish all Sonic games would have had this this um, kind of like a checkpoint system that's created. So every every level that you go through, you get like I think three lives. And if you run out of those lives, you got to start the level over again rather than the whole game over again, which is one thing I couldn't stand about the original Sonic games was that it literally, it, it was such a difficult, it took, it took a lot to really get through the entire game because of the way that the mechanic was set up to when you ran out of lives, the game was over. Um, but I do like this, playing this on the Switch. I had it pre-ordered on the PlayStation 4. Um, but some of these side-scrolling games that if I can get them on the Switch, I think I'm going to go that route. Um, even though I like my PlayStation 4 the best, uh, it is really hard to deny the convenience of just being able to play it like in a handheld and just wherever, wherever, whenever. So, um, glad to get that Sonic Mania. Um, uh, a random eBay purchase that I I spent about nine dollars for this is um, Children of Mana for the Nintendo DS. Um, I just have been kind of interested in the different spinoffs of the Mana series, and um, this is one that I've looked into as far as what it was like, and it's actually a very toned down version of like um it's nowhere near secret of mana but um i can't remember what the ps1 version ps1 uh mana game is called um not legends of mana um but that one's also kind of toned down too so this is just kind of like a hack and slash game but um i play probably play like an hour of it and it's not bad but it's not like the most amazingly best game in the world though so uh not bad. i mean if i would have paid like 20 30 dollars for it i would have been a little more upset but uh yeah anyway all right this next game i need to set give a little bit of backstory um i found this at a thrift store uh this is a playstation 1 rpg it is the the first persona game in the series that that I am aware of um I was really shocked at at what this is going for uh, when I looked it up uh just like on the sold listings on eBay um but I literally walked into this thrift store uh I was I was just uh, getting my son out uh one day and I I took him into this thrift store that I haven't been to in probably a good month or two and this was in the CD area and I got this for a dollar ninety nine and um everything's in there 
um, except for maybe the manual, I don't think is in there, but, um, the woman was like going to charge me more because she just assumed this was like a big, like there were going to be more discs in there. And I was like, I had to like enlighten her that it clearly says right there that there's only one disc in there. Um, because she, she just was like going to charge me like two bucks per disc and she was assuming there's gonna be like four in there but anyway um dollar 99 for that was really awesome i cannot complain that was that really made my day <laughs> all right um knack 2 uh was a game that when i saw at gamestop uh the price got reduced it uh it got down to 14.99 i don't think it's still at that i think it kind of went back up to either 1899 or 1999 but uh for 1499 um i went ahead and made it made a trip out to get it just because i liked the first knack um sometimes it's just fun to play through a game that is just got fun gameplay uh it, it's basically like a beat-em-up like i feel like this, the genre that i've been the most addicted to lately is the beat-em-up beat-em-up genre and uh, Knack and Knack 2 are definitely, they're just beat em up games. They're not really too heavy on their storyline. Um, but the company behind this series is actually, they, they've they made a, a really a well-polished series. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter. Um, and it's just an action series. It's, it's really good. Um, you could play it with kids in the room that's why I kind of liked it because my little boy I don't mind him you know being here with me playing this because it's not an overly violent game um but I, I like the series I, I think it's it's a lot of fun it's, it's it's there's very few beat em up games left and this is one that's still around that's pretty fun um uh, a game that came out by THQ Nordic is Titan Quest. Um, this was another scenario where like I kept an eye on it on Amazon and the price just dropped. It was like really close to like 10 bucks. It was like 11, 12 dollars, something like that and free shipping. And um, I played this probably like a week ago. And when I played it one night, I was playing it for like a good two hours. It's, it's, it's a Diablo clone. Um, it's a little bit more detailed and has more nuance too many a little a few more nuances than I would like. Um, I just kind of like the games where you just jump in and it's it's kind of streamlined. Um, the one thing that I have criticism for this game is that like you pick up you pick up equipment like crazy and then you gotta manage it and then you um, have to sell it off, I think and it's just very tedious where um, it feels like it should have been been handled a little bit more more conveniently, but um, and then the other thing that I dislike too is that like you can be picking up like different equipment and then there could be better equipment that you're holding on to, but you kind of have to kind of sift through the equipment and really look at the stats very closely to see what's the best one. I wish there could be like almost like a setting where it could just be like an auto adjust. Where it just when you pick up something new, it lets you know immediately, so that you can have that new spear, that new sword, whatever it may be. But um, Titan Quest is not bad. Um, a Play Asia game that I picked up back in May and it arrived in uh, early July is a game called Reverie, and it is a top-down. It's like people make comparisons to Earthbound and Zelda, um, which I can see that, but um, it's got a lot of character to it. Uh, very simplistic gameplay, which which is not a bad thing. I like that. Uh, sometimes these games are like overly complicated. I just I don't have a lot of time to really invest in an overly compl overly complicated game. So I like that this is just. It almost it almost seems like it was a it was a game made for like the Game Boy Advanced uh twenty years ago. Or not twenty years ago, fifteen years ago. Um but it it's um 
definitely worthy of a physical release and um I like Play Asia, but I wish that they would just release uh, just simple standard games. I know that they do tend to do that eventually, but um, these limited edition, these like boxes are, are nice, but they take up a lot of space, which um, I kind of just wish it was the game. But um, I, know, I know I'm probably in the minority about complaining about that, but uh, especially since Play Asia can create this as the the game that you buy and it's not that expensive i think this was 34.99 free shipping and then i used a code that knocked off like three dollars so it was like it was like 32 bucks which was really good um all right keep going here on ebay uh there was a deal where I forget the specifics, but I got $25 off, and it ended up being I got six games to reach like um, a certain number, a dollar amount to get the $25 off. And when it when it broke down, six games for the total amount that I spent, it's about $16 per game. So I'll show you the, I'll show you. I'll actually I'll start over here. Um, I've been interested in uh, beat 'em ups, like I said, and so I, I decided to check out this series. I only bought the two. I know there's at least three or four on the PlayStation 2. Uh, but the first Teenage Mutant Ninja, Ninja Turtles, um, which I played this earlier today for maybe like 20 minutes, and it was all right. It's, it's actually a lot slower than I was hoping. I thought it would be a little bit more faster paced. Um, but Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Battle of the Nexus, and... Again, they might not be worth sixteen dollars, but um, the other games that I have are gonna be worth worth what I paid, I think. So um, I also got the Jack and Daxter collection, which um, I have all three of these games, but um, I just have always wanted this upgraded version, um, just because of. The, mostly just the visuals, but also to have them all in one spot and um, try to try to actually play through them with on my on my PS3, which I'm more likely to play than on my PlayStation 2, um, just because it's a, it's it's conveniently set up. Uh, my PlayStation 2 is on my smaller TV that I have. Um, I also got the uh, Ratchet and Clank collection and um this one was used but this one i got as a new copy um that's still sealed um the other games that are heavier in the price were these two uh contra 4 and aliens infestation um it's actually pretty shocking how expensive this game is is going for um kind of makes me wish i would have bought it uh, at a much cheaper price even I can remember it being a lot cheaper, probably ten, fifteen dollars, even just a few years ago. But now uh, this this was the cheapest listing with the case. It was thirty nine ninety nine. So to get that for basically sixteen, if you or if you if you count it as that's the twenty five dollars off, and these are just the price as is, then it's not too bad. But Contra 4 was one that I've been really interested in picking up and Aliens Infestation. I've been just trying to go after DS games that are really um, of quality that I really wanted to check out and play. So, um, something else I picked up that I just threw on there. I, I built it earlier this week. If you can't tell what this is, this is basically like a, a Lego figure um, of Boba Fett. Um... If, you, if you've never heard of a website called AliExpress, you should look into it. Um, AliExpress sells Chinese knockoff things. And this is a Chinese knockoff of a Lego set, a Star Wars Lego set. If you ever, if you go into Target or Walmart and you look in like the, the aisles for toys for Legos, they have these, these uh, Star Wars action figures that the sets are literally like $30, $40.00 just for one and this is the same exact set just not in a box it was in like a bag with like 
obviously not the same Lego directions, but it's like the same quality. And I paid like six dollars for it. Um, there's other like the other characters that you can find at the the, the the department stores are on their on the website. I think there's a Darth Vader that um, I was thinking about getting that was like maybe nine dollars. And again, that's like I think forty dollars at like Target. So um, I was I'm not gonna buy too many of them. I think I just might stick with just like Boba Fett and Darth Vader, but. Um, they don't have some of the older one, older characters. I think I would have liked to have gotten like Darth Maul, and maybe um, I always like Qui Gon Jinn. Um, but anyway, just uh, wanted to show that. And then the last thing, the console that I got <clears throat> is another Super Nintendo Classic, and this is the second one that I've purchased. And I just really can't explain why I picked up a second one. Just it, it's just I think more out of convenience. Um, I plan to have one that is dedicated to not a full set library, but dedicated to Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, which I already have that. I already have that going. Um, on that one there, it's got, uh, all the best Super Nintendo and all the best Sega Genesis games on that Super Nintendo Classic. And then this one here, which I haven't even opened yet, I want to, um, add Game Boy Advanced and regular Nintendo games on that. And then so I can just swap out the system and then be able to play <clears throat> play those games um, very easily. Um, like I'm hardly even playing like my cartridge based games just because of how convenient these systems are. Um, but actually when I bought it, um, I was thinking that like they weren't going to produce any more of them. And then I was not aware that they were getting more nintendo classics in so with the nes classics they also got like uh it seemed like a resurging amount of snes classics too and uh, so they're like pretty much all over the place now but um, i don't regret getting a second one i actually think i might um maybe even even keep it in at, at where i work at and then just play it like on my lunch breaks um which is is something i can do uh it's not no one's gonna look at me in, in a weird way, but um, but anyway, this is uh, these are my games, and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, tell me what you're playing later.